on today's show. So you thought high school chemistry was tough? Well, these students have a more difficult test, <laughs> trying to catch a muskie and be a winner. And later, we call him the Birdman because he's everything to Minnesota songbirds, including revamping your backyard to make it, well, birdier. This is Roscoe P. Saddle up because we're gonna go riding with the Shriners on a trail not far, would you believe, from Target Field. Hang on. And later, our Minnesota Bound Classic is a beauty, remembering the most amazing collection of Minnesota's official flower, the Lady Slipper. Those stories and more, next. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show and you can see who's in the driver's seat here, right? You know, when I was in high school we had reading, writing, arithmetic, but now it seems like it's a lot more fun because high schools today have something called a musky fishing tournament. Wow, Bill Shirk has the story. <laughs> On an early weekday morning, snooze just isn't an option for a small group of Minnesota high schoolers. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to thank you so much for being here. This is the fourth annual high school muskie tournament in the Twin City Regional. These young anglers chase the biggest of prey. Michael, okay, got another box with lures. High schoolers competing in Muskie Inc.'s high school fishing tournament. Be safe. Have fun. We'll talk to each other throughout the day. See you back at one. The idea, go out on Lake Minnetonka and try and catch a muskie. These kids come from all over. We have high schools uh, represented Elk River, Wyzetta, Shakopee. Muskie had Tom Keith brainstorm the tournament. The three basic principles of Muskie's Inc. are research, the fisheries, and youth. They're looking for new experiences and you can feel pretty isolated if you're the only two people in, the, in your whole school that fish. But then when you get to an event like this, uh, you see that, that there's boys and girls just like you who really like to fish and really enjoy the outdoor experience. Three dozen students fish using either their boats or their family boats. It would be, it would be really nice just to hook up with something. Why is that a sophomore, Connor Austin is hooked I've never never done any tournaments before, so this is my first year. He's not the only one. I'm sitting here eating popcorn and getting fat and watching these guys try to catch fish. <laughs> Connor's dad plays role of chauffeur. This is his first tournament too. It also gives uh, some of their classmates the idea that you know getting out on the water and enjoying some of our natural resources is a, uh, a pretty nice thing to do. It's the lure of musky fishing, the mystique behind hooking a monster fish, the rush of that moment. Yeah, you hear they're the, the fish of 10,000 casts, um, but the strike can be so explosive. 18, just a smidge over 18. Connor's first might not be a monster, but it is yeah. a fish. Uh, I saw in a little phantom, soft tail, and Came up out of the weeds and just nailed it. Did it hit it hard? Yeah, it hit it really hard. Just across the bay, Shakopee student Robbie Chance hopes for a repeat of his last musky trip. And my largest I caught last week was 15 and a half inches, right here on Lake Minnetonka in the same bay. I love it. They're just big fish, you know, they're so hard to catch. Which is why Faribault senior Michael Brown might take today's trophy. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. That's a hell of a fish. Michael just hooked and released a 40 inch fish. Nothing too special. I've been throwing cowgirls and bulldogs all day, and I decided to put something that people normally don't throw. I learned this technique uh, last year, actually, from another friend of mine. And he's caught fish on it before, and people see this lure and say, hey, that's too small. But it's actually just perfect. The tournament's only muskie so far. 
Well, you know, the muskies are, are the biggest predators in the water. They'll eat when they want and they'll eat what they want. Which makes today tough. I guess my big hope for this event is, is to pro provide a vehicle for kids to really experience muskie fishing in a very safe manner, know how to be safe on the water. Today's winners move on to Minnesota State Tournament, but that's not completely the point. A snapshot in new friends, okay. however, is. When we return, how to make your backyard a place of beauty for the birds? We have the answer. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Connecticut. Radco Truck Accessories. And by Starkey Hearing Technologies. Up next, a story that Raven and I both will like. She's a bird dog and I'm a bird watcher. It's a story about a fella who turns your backyard into something birds appreciate. This is a Pearson style bluebird house on my property and we're going to take a look inside. Uh, this is a bluebird nest with five eggs. I, I try and check them once a week just to monitor the progress. If the subject is birds, birds of any color, shape, or size, chances are Judd Brink is hovering nearby. Nearby watching birds or feeding birds. Well, we're gonna put some mealworms in this little plastic dish here for the Orioles. Or Judd may be guiding other bird watchers to birdie places around his home in Brainerd, Minnesota. It's exciting for me to, to see the expressions of people's faces when they see their first scarlet tanager or their first common loon on a nest. What hatched next was a new business, Minnesota Backyard Birds, with a nest full of services ranging from designing your backyard to attract birds to a service offering bird feeder maintenance. People are just interested in, in getting started with, with a bird feeding station or people have done it for a long time, but maybe their feeders are getting old, so I help people make some different changes in their, in their backyard to increase the number and variety of birds coming to their feeders. We just arrived at a home on Gull Lake, one of my customers. Um, just gonna show you the things that I take with me. I got a seed bucket here for the old seed. Mealworms, grape jelly, have a seed scoop, various cleaning supplies, I also bring some soapy water to clean the feeders with. And then I also got sugar water in here for the hummingbirds. And what makes the birds respond to your backyard? It is a combination of, of, of a bird feeder plus a water feature, uh, native plantings of trees or shrubs that attract birds. Um, I call that birdscaping. When I uh, make a, a bird, my backyard bird call station, I always like to recommend more than one feeding station because birds feed at different heights. Birds prefer different food types. Oranges for the Orioles. And that's the nice thing about birdscaping. It's not just, here you go, here's a bunch of feeders and, and, I, and I leave you with a bunch of feeders. So they're, they're properly installed. They're the right feeders for the habitat. They're gonna be you know, the right food and those feeders to attract basically what you want to attract. Of course, running the business means Judd gets to stay immersed in the life and times of native Minnesota birds. This is a chickadee nest. And you can see the difference between the bluebird nest and the chickadee nest. Chickadees always use a lot of moss and a lot of fine hair. Um, but we'll take a quick peek inside here. There's the five chickadee eggs. And you can see all that fine hair in the nest cup birds of every feather. Oh, there's a goldfinch. Oh, there's a female oriole. Going to add some more mealworms to this feeder for the orioles and chickies that seem to be visiting it so far. Sometimes even Judd sees a birdie surprise. 
Holy crap, that's my, that's a new guard bird for me. That's a Scarlet Tanager. It's my first uh, one at this, at this location. This is a bird that usually doesn't come to feeders. And when Judd's birdscaping job is done, the result is another Minnesota backyard that's not just a barren, lifeless piece of bluegrass. I, I'm very fortunate that I get to do my two favorite things every day, is watch birds and feed birds. It's now a backyard worth watching. Uh, this group started in 1953, and it was uh, born out of a, a group of guys from Minneapolis went down to Arizona. Still ahead, we'll hop on a sturdy steed and explore a riding trail with the Shriners. Hang on. Closed captioning is brought to you by By the Yard, premier manufacturers of maintenance-free outdoor patio furniture and accessories from recycled plastic. Up next, it's time to saddle up and move them out. Did you know, not far from the Twin Cities, there's a horse riding trail? They call it the Cowtown Trail. Let's see what it's all about. If you thought the wild, wild west was long gone in Minnesota, well, just follow the trail. Caballeros del Norte means cowboys of the north. And these guys take their trail riding seriously, especially today. Today's a kickoff of our 60th anniversary trail ride. Um, this, is, uh, this group started in 1953, and it was uh, born out of a, a group of guys from Minneapolis went down to Arizona and uh, attended a ride called the Desert Caballero Ride. They liked it so much, came back and formed a uh, club here. There's even a cow town on the trail. Home sweet home for a cowboy. This trail ride attracts riders of every age, from beginners to the more, well, seasoned cowboy. Because I am a doctor. I, I don't do much practicing anymore. I getting out of it till I'm 89. <laughs> Well, I think uh, one thing everybody has in common here is love for horses, number one. And it's cross-section of guys. You can guy, find guys in the construction business. You find doctors, veterinarians, dentists, businessmen. All walks of life come from all over the country to come here to this ride. Oh, and don't forget the sure-footed mules. This is Roscoe P., my, my mule that I've had for the last three years. It's been a joy to ride and a lot of fun to have. The trail ride sometimes includes a covered wagon, very authentic. Get up. I have been a member since 2006, was my first year, so uh, yeah, I haven't missed many rides since. Yeah, it's great. I mean, there's people from all over the Midwest. A uh, guy from Florida comes in, Wyoming, uh, South Dakota, Wisconsin. Lots from Minnesota come from all over, a bunch of great guys. This Wild West features a little riding, a little food, and a little storytelling. And sometimes we uh, you know, might only see each other once or twice a year, and, and that's what's kind of nice about it, is every year we get together and we're kind of, kind of a little, uh, kind of like my good friends that I see once or twice a year, and, we, and horses, and it's, it's all about horses and camaraderie and just getting together and having good times together. I like uh, getting away from, from life, basically, is what I like, like about coming out here. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm 74 years old. I think I'm just going to have to play, base it on a year-by-year -year basis. I don't know how long it'll be, but I'll try at least to do it for as long as I can. It's a great way to play. I like it. The trail ride was beautiful. It was a good day. The little cloud cover kept it cool, and and uh, 
it was uh, it's beautiful. We got 90 riders and there was mushrooms and everything's green. It's, it's a it's a perfect day. Happy trails there, partner. Coming up, our Minnesota Bound Classic remembers an amazing display in the wild. A display of Minnesota state flower. You know its name? Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Jesse Trouble Foundation Systems and Safe Basements Waterproofing, Grand Rapids Tourism, and by the Minnesota Agricultural Water Resources Coalition. Our Minnesota Bound Classic this week is about our state flower, the lady slipper. Now most of us think the lady slipper is very rare, and I guess you could say it is. But we found a spot that the lady slipper just blossoms like you wouldn't believe. I just put this stuff on here. Dress for put success. On and then I put my cap on over this. That's just one of Herman James Outdoor Secrets. This is my little bag for my rocks, whatever. I go prepared. <laughs> And then we go up river about a half a mile to a big ravine. Herman likes to hike, and on this day, it's a walk through a very buggy St. Croix River Valley. Herman recently volunteered to take me along on a hunt of sorts. Come on, come on, come on. Now what are you looking for? Agate. <laughs> yes, Herman's a rock hound, and he finds monster Lake Superior agates here in the St. Croix Creek beds. God, it sure looks, whoa, sure looks good through here. He must know what he's doing, because just that fast. If you start picking them up from here. Herman grabbed a one pound jackpot. That's a Lake Superior Bandit Agate right there. Huh. That is worth, that is worth $50. That's what I call a keeper, like a walleye. I don't know how to find them like you. <laughs> Come on, babe. There you go. You gotta know really what you're looking for. Oh, that's a pretty thing. But this is pretty? not a story about rocks. It's just like a picture in there. You see, 10 years ago, while Herman hunted agates here, he accidentally stumbled onto a much more profound prize. Come on, come on, I know I'm here. A secret he's volunteered only now to share. We're getting close, I can smell them. <laughs> There's one, two, three, four, five right here. Right here, six, seven, eight, Oh, a lot of them, God darn it. Herman wandered onto a wild garden of pink lady slippers, Minnesota's elusive state flower. 14, there's some in bloom, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. There's 23 just, just right here, all up through here. That, that's where they're at, they're all over. They're all over here in this one little spot. <laughs> and watch where you step, because there's some that's just only this high. He stumbled onto 186 flowers to be exact. I walked through here and I stopped and looked and I couldn't believe it. And I looked at it and I said to myself, that's the Minnesota State Flower. That's, this is lady slippers. And I was I almost killed myself getting out of here, I was so excited. Now, it's no secret. This kind of wildflower patch just isn't very common. The flowers grow only in wet, swampy areas that also happen to get a lot of sunlight. It's a beautiful flower. It's in the shape of a shoe. That's, that's where the name came from, Lady Slipper. It has a scent, but it don't have a scent like, you know, flowers in your yard. It just smells kind of different, you know. It's a, it, there's a smell to it. It's just beautiful. Now, don't ask Herman to share his spot. He won't tell you. Not out of greed, but out of a need to protect his quiet garden and our state flower. You gotta, you gotta give it room to grow. This is my garden, Darren Wright. I've protected them for 10 years and I'll keep protecting them as long as I can. Amidst the flowers, Bill Shirk. They've been here for a long time and they're gonna stay here. Minnesota bound. <laughs> Beautiful flower, our lady slipper, but we're not going to tell you where they're at. Not this time anyway. Well, that about does it for us. Remember to introduce the kid of the great outdoors. I'm Ron Sheeran, of course, always the star of the show and now the driver of my new GMC, Raven. Can mm -hmm. you start it? <laughs> transportation provided by Premier Transportation. 
call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.